YouTube this is Bean coming at you from my basement in Indiana and this is my second video in my I do series and in this video I'm gonna be doing some Kintsugi furniture making in my last video I did magical realism mixed with street art and that was a lot of hand drawing and Photoshop painting uh, some manipulation and this time I'm gonna be making a desk uh, so some woodworking techniques and some epoxy and uh, a lot of other cool different stuff that I'm trying with this one. Uh, basically I'm going to walk you through start to finish on making my new desk for my computer and my recording setup. And so here it is, check it out, hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you. So in this second video what I'm making is a waterfall desk that's inspired by Japanese Kintsugi. Kintsugi is the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery. It's called golden joinery. Uh, and they take and they mix a lacquer with gold or silver or platinum dust. And they use that to repair a piece of pottery in such a way that the pottery becomes more beautiful than it started out. And it becomes more beautiful by highlighting the flaws from the break, not trying to hide those. A waterfall desk is usually made by taking two opposing 45 degree angle cuts out of a slab of wood and then folding that slab on a 90 degree angle so that you create this effect that the slab just turns and falls off or water falls down. So this slab of wood I'm using is a slab of beetle kill pine and I've had it for a few years uh, since I moved from Colorado actually. One of the problems here is that it's got a lot of saw marks in it so I've got to go through and sand those out. things I noticed while preparing to make this video is that if you're going to make any kind of videos on building or making furniture then first thing you have to have is a bunch of best tool stuff and best tool is this German brand they make pretty good tools uh, but they're so prohibitively expensive it's just asinine so you can see my quick life hack here to get yourself any kind of best tool that you want a lot of these YouTube videos are like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a desk for $50. And they go through and they make that desk and, and the first thing they do is they pull out a $3,000 table saw. Um, and to me, it just kind of defeats the purpose. Here you can see I'm sanding. Uh, I started out with a palm sander, and that was that was a terrible idea. So quickly, I decided let's uh, let's get out the old belt sander here. So I go through and I belt sand everything, and this is the product of the belt sanding. And then after I belt sanded, I went through with 60 grit, 120, and then 220 to get it all nice. Um, and then I set up a fence and I started cutting my 45 degree angles. Here you see them cut in. Everything's looking pretty good, so I decided to move on to the next part, which is the Kintsugi part. I went through and I drew some kind of rough cracks and breaks, and what I wanted to do was keep in the idea of Kintsugi, which is filling up crack lines, break lines, with, an, with a lacquer, and in this case I'm using epoxy, and they usually use like a precious metal, um, but it's my desk, so I decided I was going to use metallic purple, because uh, I think that'll be way prettier on this light wood.
So as I was going, I figured out I could rock the router back and forth, and that would get me uh, a lot of different depth, a lot of stuff that I, I thought felt a lot more natural than just going through and routing a, a single depth in the wood. Here I'm um, matching the router lines to go for the waterfall joint. So the aesthetic of Kintsugi, like I said, are these repaired cracks. And at first I thought, you know, I'll just cut the wood uh, and then do full epoxy joints in there. But then I kind of realized, like, why destroy the integrity of the wood? So that's why I ultimately decided to go with this V-bit and just kind of fake it. I'm already not doing gold Kintsugi because it, you know, isn't within my aesthetic. So I just decided, you know, why do full crazy cracks throughout the wood when I could just do it this way. Now I'm just going through and taping all of the edges where I think the epoxy will leak out. It's not a whole lot of epoxy so I just decided to go with some masking tape here and ultimately it really worked exactly as I needed it to. I thought there might be some leaking but not really any leakage. I use an epoxy from a company called Stone Coat Countertops. They make a lot of really good epoxies. Uh, I've used this before on several different projects. And then just some metallic purple uh, pigment mixed into one part of it. And I get that pigment to what about I want it to be. And then I mix the other part in and then I'm ready to start pouring. So I've seen a lot of different type of epoxy furniture making and, and honestly I think anymore as a whole epoxy is kind of overused in terms of just coating or putting pounds or pounds of epoxy into a, a really nice piece of wood. Um, and I've even seen this idea of, of Kintsugi before. I had a student do it back when I was a professor. Um, but I do love epoxy for filling gaps or strengthening wood. And so this idea that you'd be making repairs with epoxy, I think really kind of lent itself to this process. Here you can see I'm uncovering one of the cracks with this sander. I just thought it was a really cool shot. Ultimately, 
ultimately I decided hand sanding everything with a palm sander was just going to take way too long. So we're back to the belt sander again and then of course every time I pull out the belt sander I have to re-sand everything back through 60, 120, up to 220 grit to get the wood still looking the way I would like it to. Uh, it was, there was a lot more sanding in this than I, I wanted in my life. Now I've got some purple heart, uh, and purple heart's my favorite type of wood. Maybe you can tell I like purple a lot, so uh, I wanted to make some bow ties. Because in woodworking, if you have cracks in a piece of wood, you're obviously going to go through and put some type of wood to bridge those cracks to kind of strengthen it up. You can see a lot of bow ties in slab work uh, and other people's projects. So I wanted to go through, add in some bow ties, kind of bake those in as if I were actually working with a piece of wood that had cracked this dramatically. Uh, and this is how you would repair it. So I made myself a bunch of bow ties. Here you can see I uh, needed to get out my Festool mallet, so had to do that real fast. How else am I going to chisel? So I made myself a bunch of bow ties. I laid those out went through and I routed each of them out at a depth that was just slightly uh, less than the width of my bow tie, the thickness of my bow tie. And then I test fit the first one and then I just go in and route everything out, uh, chisel it out and then get everything dry fit so I can glue it and wait for the night for it to set up. This epoxy routes really nicely. It was one of the things I was kind of super afraid about is that I was just gonna start shattering epoxy, but usually epoxy routes really nicely. It's just, you know, you're still gonna be nervous when you try it for the first time on a relatively finished piece of wood. Once all the bow ties were set up, I went through and just sanded those back down to the surface. Uh, here you can kind of see a shot of everything sanded back down to the same plane as the piece of wood. It's all starting to come together really nicely, uh, and it's just about time to assemble the waterfall table. Now when it came to assembly, I had these big construction squares because I really wanted to make sure this joint was square. I went through and I glued both sides of the joint, flipped the slab of wood back over, and then I clamped it all back together to make sure it held and then left that overnight uh, just so I could make sure that that joint was really nice and clean. One of the issues here is that I didn't have a perfect 45 degree cut. And so it, the joint opened up a little bit on me toward the outside, uh, but I wasn't particularly worried about that because I had this idea to treat the, the joint in the wood where it water falls over the same way as the epoxy. And, and here you can see that joint opened up. If this were a hardwood, I could go through and plane that joint by hand until it was perfect and the seams matched up really well but because this is pine and that's end grain i touched it with a planer and it just blew the end grain out it was really really bad so i i decided quickly to move away from that idea of of this perfect joint 
Here you can see I'm going back through with my router and I'm routing this line in there. Uh, and then I added some more cracks into it just to kind of highlight that joint because like I said in Kintsugi we're highlighting imperfections and using that to make a more beautiful thing than we started with. So I figured rather than try to you know hide this or come up with something for it that I would just embrace the Kintsugi side of this and make this defect into something that was more beautiful than it started. This is the joint all prepped up. I got it ready to pour some epoxy in there. And then of course it started snowing. And if you know anything about epoxy, you cannot pour epoxy in less than 50 degree weather. So I was forced to move everything inside, and once I started moving stuff inside, uh, I got the joys of my favorite helpers, all my cats. They were now the most interested in what I was doing. Same exact process, pour the epoxy into the joint, let it set up, and then go through and torch it, uh, just to make sure there are no air bubbles. Here, because this is pine, it's obviously reinforced with a bunch of epoxy into that joint. But I wanted to give it even more reinforcement since I didn't dowel this joint and like I said it's pine so it's kind of weak. I wanted to go through and put in some more butterflies, only uh, these are kind of exposed tenons. And I thought it'd be really cool if those were highlighted and you could see the woodworking process just kind of front and center. Nothing else in this is hidden in terms of repairs. So why hide the joinery? So I go through and I cut 45s for this and then this is just me chiseling it out and dry fitting and then eventually gluing my exposed Purple Heart tenons. Once those tenons were set up and sanded back down, I gave everything a quick sand of 220 just to get it nice and smooth and then I brought it back inside because it snowed again um, and I was going to poly everything, polyurethane everything. See my helper? This is Gertrude, she's my tiny kitty and to her absolutely everything's a game. So after tack clothing, I got my uh, some oil-based polyurethane out, and I went through and I did three coats of this. I gave about four hours dry time in between each coat, and I tried to make sure I wasn't using a brush, so it was it stayed pretty self-leveling. And the epoxy, if you sand it to 220, uh, it pretty much comes back uh, just like it was before you sanded it. So you can see here it gets a lot of its vibrancy back and it goes back to clear and uh, it's really, really pretty.
last part of this waterfall desk is the opposing side needs a leg. So this is some inch and a half by inch and a half box steel that I welded together. I uh, just went through and sanded everything so it was nice and smooth and then got my favorite color of purple spray paint out which is a uh, Krylon Fusion grape I believe and it's it's the best purple. I uh, went through, I did several coats of that, sanded a little bit in between just to make sure it was all nice and then popped some holes in it so that I could lag screw it down to the desk. Nice shot of my back right there. Here we have the finished desk, everything's assembled, put together, polyed. Next we're going to have some obligatory uh, glamour shots here. Don't really know how to do glamour shots, so enjoy. Got that kitty B roll. My old desk, it was an atrocity. Tiny Kitty's helpful, she's helping out. So that's the second video. Hopefully you like the desk. Uh, I know the cats do. Uh, they were extremely helpful. Uh, my next video I'm planning to release here pretty soon. I'm doing a full-size poster for Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I did some decorating back here and you can see I have this big space on my wall like right there. Um, and I needed something to fill it up so uh, next thing I'm going to be doing is some digital manipulation with some existing photos and kind of putting it all together, color correcting it, making a full composition out of it. I've done it before with some other posters like I have a Mandalorian poster that I did it with. Uh, so yeah, if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It'll help me out a lot. 
uh, thank you very much and hopefully you have a good one. Tiny Kitty is not only helpful when it comes to building, sanding, and staining, but she is also an adept editor. She'll come to your house and basically do your video for you.